mail call. Something from T.A. Noble. What could that be? I'm going to open it, find out. Da, da, da. Look at that. Tom's Busted Knuckle Garage. Now, I don't have a whole lot of experience on cars, but I've definitely wrapped my knuckles on things. So, yep. I understand that part. And I understand that part. And that, folks, is his channel. So go check him out. I like that sticker. I have to say, I like having the, uh, the females represented on the board. So let it not be said that we're chauvinists because we've got women up on our board. You know, Aries Raven 1, Ron. Milrick 77 and uh, T.A. Noble. Yep, yep. So, yeah. Blurry. Don't you like that blur? That's nice. So, we're not a bunch of chauvinist guys. We've got women up on our boards. Come on. Hmm? Right. Well, yes. Redhead stripper. I don't know. What some people call chauvinism, I just call appreciation. Alright, so in my defense, look how my uh, welder is set up. You can see cut into the sheet metal above the terminal screws a positive and negative symbol, which is backwards from the label. So Right now, mine is set up for black to positive, which was for the no gas. So I did originally configure the welder for flex core. I had been using it this configured this way for gas because black is on the left. Red is on the white, uh, right, like it says in this stupid freaking label, which is backwards from how the Harbor Freight Chicago elect fuck is set up. Look at that. So, it's, uh, yeah. So I'm going to fix that and try doing my gas welding again. I was going to go back and do flex core thinking that I had it backwards for that. Just goes to show, you can read the label, read the manual all you want and they still just ram it up your freaking butt. Doesn't that feel good? I'm enjoying it. All right, so really I have nothing great to show you because I changed the polarity over to welding for gas. I showed you my labeling is backwards from what the actual welder is set up for. And I should say I didn't actually check the polarity, the physical polarity. Um, but anyway, I did have trouble. So I did, I switched the polarity according to the hard stamp on the case here. So according to the label, the polarity is set up for gas welding. I switched my feeder spool over. I changed the uh, wire spool. I changed the wire tip. I still have the the thicker uh, 0.035 uh, uh, feeder tube that uh, Velvet Hema suggested that I, I switch over. I just haven't got that yet. So 
basically everything is right except for that the feeder shield. Um, but I'm still blowing through. And I noticed I was blowing through even though that the gap between the panels was really, really, really tiny. Focus. You know, really small. Sixteenth of an inch, maybe. And I couldn't drag the puddle from one side to the other. I tried starting on one side, tried going to the other. Uh, it was a count of at least two seconds total, up to maybe about four. Um, just blowing through, blowing through, blowing through. So as ugly as it is, as terrible as it is, my flange weld, focus, thank you, my flange weld worked out the best. Even though it was super crappy, I must say it is super strong. That metal's at least an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, it's mostly uh, weld wire. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is try to cut another another bit out of this practice panel and flange it and flux core it. Or you know, I'll I'll try the gas since it's set up for that, and I got the gas and all that crap. But I'm going to try the flange weld, the butt weld. I can change the butt weld to a flange weld by putting a backer backer sheet in there. And I can do that by just going tack, 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 and I've got a piece of backer metal there. I can't do that around here. Um, the purists out there are probably going to want to shoot me. I may end up just welding it to this where I can. Well, uh, all right, so I can't do that. I can't really do that. But actually, if I put something in here, tack weld something in there, then I can sort of weld it and then sort of mud it and sort of get it to work out. Getting this as a butt weld all the way down out of my league right now. I'm going to practice more, but I do want to get this panel done. So I'm going to have to figure something out. And I'm going to have to figure something out down here because I have to replace this metal, right, with a specially made patch, three dimensional curve, multi. Multi-plane curve, gonna have to do something, and I would like it to be more metal than mud. So, got my work cut out for me. I knew this would be the toughest part. Um, I, I gotta make it work. So I know what I need to work on. I know what I need to practice. Uh, a little frustrating. I've got other, you know. Stupid little things to wrestle with. Speaking of which, speaking of which, I don't need to show you, but um, I worked on my dashboard a while back, replacing the light bulbs, and so when I put everything back, it's all nice and pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I hit the shifter, the uh, shift indicator on the dash doesn't move. So obviously there's some linkage or lever or bolt or something that I undid that I didn't redo. What tells the shift indicator on the dash that I've changed gears? I know it's something simple. I don't care if I have to take the dash apart again to do it. I just need to know what that is. And I've seen that on a couple other cars. One other car. Where you change the, the gear shifter and the, the indicator doesn't change on the dashboard. I want that to work. Because it feels kind of mushy. 
you know, there's not like a positive, you know, it kind of goes clunk, 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 but it's not crisp. So I would like to know what gear I'm in. So if people out there could tell me, I know Hanson 265 Chevy was very helpful with dashboard stuff. Maybe he knows where the linkage is to get the indicator. That would be great. Please help. Please help. Winning. That's where we are.